Well, welcome, welcome, welcome. I just want to invite you guys to be with us uh, for this faculty development training. She is Dr. Tracy Dunn. And he is Dr. Daryl D. Green. Uh, we are going to talk about innovative engagement of Generation, Generation Z. So just like a classroom, if you behave, if you behave yourself, we have a prize at the end. So Tracy, uh, don't you really want to know who's in the room? I would most definitely like to know who is in the room. So we are going to, we are just going to take a poll. And let's just, I'm going to open, I'm going to launch it. And let's see if technology will behave itself. So just put, let us know where you're, where you're at. Put, put that in for me. I want to know who's in the room, where, where you're at. Okay. See, I see some things going on. All right. All right. All right. And I think that, I think, I think we don't have our new, new takers yet. So let's uh, just, just see in our room. So Tracy, can you, I'm going to share our results. Can you, can you talk about uh, who, who our participants are? Well, Daryl, we have someone representing the East Coast. We have someone representing the South and someone representing the Midwest. So I say we have great representation from the great U.S. of A. Oh, no, no, no Alabama or no uh, Crimson Tide or, or, or Oklahoma or even uh, what I could say, uh, I would say uh, South Carolina. <laughs> well, uh, of course, all of the above. Uh, okay. And um, everyone on this call considers themselves to be faculty. Okay, good, good, good. Thank, thank you, thank you so much. We will start the sharing. All right, so back uh, back to our, our presentation. Uh, we we hope that you will find this uh, presentation uh, both engaging and meaningful. Uh, we uh, we want we want you to be involved, and uh, we're just going to go ahead and get started. So we're glad that you're here with us today, and we have so much to say about this topic, but um, we don't have a year to cover it all, right? So what we've done here in this presentation is we have um, provided like a high-level overview of how to engage Generation Z. Uh, we wanted to give you some useful information that you can build upon and we've organized our presentation into sections, as you can see from the agenda. Hey, Tracy, we, if if they invited us, we would we would come on campus. If I know you're very busy as a dean, but we would, we would come come on campus and present, right? Or they Absolutely. can come to or they can come to ACBSP. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> All right, so let's uh, let's get started. Just a uh, brief brief introductions. Uh, again, I am uh, Daryl Daryl Green, originally from Shreveport, Louisiana. Shout out to Louisiana. I went to Southern University in mechanical engineering, met my wife there, Esther Lita. I spent 27 years uh, managing nuclear and non-nuclear projects and decided I wanted more out of life. Can somebody say more? I wanted more. Went back to school, got my master's degree, got my doctor's degree. And I, I retired at, at, I retired at 50 in 2016 and God brought me to Oklahoma Baptist University where I served as the Dickens chair and the uh, associate professor. And we are we're doing we're doing great things. We're doing a lot of experimenting, learning, engaging our students in the business school. And uh, Tracy, can you share a little bit about yourself? Absolutely. Good morning again. My name is Tracy Dunn. I am the dean of the Burroughs School of Business and Entrepreneurship at Benedict College. I am from South Carolina, and I have been with Benedict for the past twenty years. Um, my I have a passion for developing the next generation of business leaders. And I appreciate this opportunity to share with you today. Several years ago, I got an email for one of my business students. Let's just call him Jackson W. And this is what he said. He said, hi, Dr. Green. I just wanted to thank you uh, for teaching uh, the business communications class. He said it was probably the most fun class and I learned a lot from it. So education can be fun, 
But at the end of the day, it is, it is about, about results. And I'm, I'm just going to give a personal testimony that, in, uh, that engaging my students over the years has been transformational for my, for my teaching. Uh, we just recently took an ETS exam last, uh, last fall. Uh, I, we have we have bright students, but we don't have MIT or, or, or say Ivy League students. But in one class, uh, we take a, a, a exit exam. Uh, it's, it's a business. It's a business exam, comprehensive exam. And ninety percent students uh, scored ninety percent uh, in the percentile, which the, the previous year they would they would they were still doing a little bit better over the national average. And and what happened is I have I I engage the students. They were actually doing the reviews and studying, and we actually had a non-traditional student who was a was a, a, a mother, and uh, she actually scored ninety-nine percentile. Also, in our simulations, and and some of you know about CAPSI and simulate. It's one of the toughest simulation uh, that we that we know of in the business school. Uh, last spring, we had we had a group that scored in the ninety in the ninety-nine top one percent. And what's interesting about that? You had two. Uh, two athletes, a, a basketball player and a, a track player, international student, a very diverse, not all smart, but I would say you can drive engagement uh, through these efforts. So through engage, in, in, through innovative engagement, we can bring all students, not just the smartest students, to excellence. I want you to, I want you to think: How many of you want to be better faculty and administrators for your students? Want to be cre ready? Well, you are in the right place. So, what I want to do now is take a minute to review how far we've come as a profession in terms of engaging our students in the classroom. In the early 20th century, um, in those days, we as the professoriate, um, we were educating the greatest generation, right? And this group believed in sacrifice, they believed in hard work. And so professors, they could get away with using chalk and a chalkboard to engage the students with the content. Um, but then along came the baby boomers, those born between the years of 1946 and 1964. This group, they wanted to make a difference in the world. They wanted to question authority. And so teachers in this era, um, luckily were armed with an overhead projector, right? And they were able to share information at a faster pace with students in the classroom. Then along comes Generation X. Uh, they were born between 1965 and 1980. Um, many of them uh, found themselves in single parent homes. They were considered latchkey latch kids. Um, they thought globally, they grew up with more technology than their parents. Um, they did grow up with television. And so teachers at that time could engage them with uh, TV programming and film projectors. Um, along came Generation Y, um, born between 1981 and 1996. They are a competitive group, but they are fun loving, very social. Uh, they grew up with the personal computer, the VCR, DVD player, uh, as well as the Walkman. And luckily, the ways for engaging uh, this group of students evolved so that we could use whiteboards instead of chalkboards. We had videos. We had 3D projectors um, that allowed us to keep this generation engaged in the classroom. Uh, today, in our classrooms, we have Generation Z, also known as Gen Z, also known as Zoomers. And they were shaped by the Great Recession of 2007, 2008. Um, they grew up with the internet, they grew up with smartphones, they grew up with social media, and they are described as hypercognitive, a hypercognitive generation, very comfortable with collecting and cross referencing many sources of information. So luckily in our classroom, we now have tools that have evolved to include smart boards, internet connectivity apps and video conferencing tools like Zoom and Teams. And even though we have these tools available to engage um, Generation Z, many of us are less familiar with these tools, less comfortable with utilizing these tools, and we tend to teach the way we were taught. 
And our Zoomer students are just not having it. They want to be highly engaged. And because we are great educators, we are eager to identify the ways to do that. And that is why you are attending this presentation today. Next. We've based our presentation on Kolb's learning styles. And so he published this framework in the mid 1980s. And Kolb explains that different people naturally um, prefer a different type of learning or have a different type of learning style. And so whenever they encounter new content, they're going to um, approach it in two different ways. So the first thing that they're going to ask themselves is, do I want to just watch or do I want to be actively engaged with whatever this new content is? Do I want to do instead of watch? Uh, the second question that gets answered as they process new information is, do I, how do I want to be transformed by this information? Do I want to think about it or do I want to feel it? So again, this is just a framework that we based a lot of our information on in this presentation, and uh, we can go to the next slide. So one of the things I wanna share with you is that this is just not uh, something we, uh, we started today. It's something we've been working on a long time, and actually uh, myself and Dr. Dunn is gonna be presenting uh, uh, some, some more research on this. But one of the things I wanted to share with you, what we're talking about today, and it's something that I researched with Dr. McKeon, is a new faculty model. So I'm just going to be sharing with you, if you think with Generation Z, you're going to be able to do a, a lecture, 40, 50 minutes, and they're going to be paying attention, I got something new for you. And so what we're advocating is a new faculty model where, where faculty transcends themselves, not only just teaching, but they also become mentors and, and also become uh, coaches. Now, this is not for everyone, but, but certainly uh, our students are being uh, engaged and they want, they want to see more, more of that. So we're all familiar with the various uh, disruptors that we've experienced in higher education. Uh, we know that tuition has soared at a rate where there's now a student debt pandemic or <laughs> epidemic, excuse me. So many students are graduating um, from college with so much debt. And more often than not, the degree that they have earned is not leading to a high paying position um, that would then put them in a position to repay the loans as they start their career. And this trend has really outraged parents as well as the public and caused many to question the value of a college degree. Um, there's also a belief starting that starting in 2025, the number of college bound students is likely to decline substantially. And in fact, we are already experiencing that decline. And when you couple that with uh, the Zoomers and their distrust of higher ed, many of them are opting for certifications or entering the workforce after high school as opposed to college. And then lastly, with technology, technology has made education so accessible now. There are so many online uh, learning platforms like Coursera that offer an alternative to the traditional brick and mortar college education. And all of these forces have worked together to disrupt what we know um, and what has been the case in higher ed. Next. So the, the question that, that has to be asked is, who are these folks? Who is, who is Generation Z? And certainly uh, Tracy has talked about, we call the cohort, the co-generations, or each generation has their own distinct uh, personality and traits. Uh, we're just going to focus down in on Generation Z. Uh, Generation Z could be the most considered to be the most diverse, the most digital, the most entrepreneur uh, generation ever. And just kind of go over some traits. Uh, there are about 23 million of them born, uh, born after 19, uh, 1995. So here's some traits I think is interesting. I want you to think about your teaching style, your teaching method. As I talk about the traits, uh, 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 their attention span 
is about eight seconds. What I don't mean literally eight seconds, but I mean very short. Uh, they're savers. They're sociable. Their life is an open book. Little is kept secret. Uh, they crave constant and immediate inf- uh, feedback. Or we give them that. That's the question. Again, the digital natives, the entrepreneur. I want you to think about this. Generation Z has never known a world without smartphones and social media. If they want something, they just Google it. And just kind of go back to this diversity thing. Uh, It's the most diverse and inclusive generation ever. Uh, Nearly half of them, about 48% are racial ethnic ethnic minorities. So they're social, they're entrepreneurial. Are we building a platform, a curriculum design that matches the traits and the needs of Generation Z? So our Zoomer students, they now expect authenticity from us. They want to be connected to each other. They want to be connected to us. They want what they consider to be a very human experience. They want interaction. They want engagement. And so really, that is the basis for this presentation. We want to provide you with information that will connect more readily with this particular group of students. Next. So let's talk about curriculum, curriculum design, learning, learning material. Uh, I want you to raise your hand. Uh, use some electronic, electronic reactions at the bottom of your, your Zoom screen. I want you to raise your hand if, if you have had formal curriculum design training. Uh, the, the 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 answer is most most of the, most of us as for faculty. Oh, good. Obviously, Dr. Jackson is raising her hand. Very good, very good. Uh, so most faculty were experts uh, in our own discipline, but not in just uh, training. So there's an art. There is a art in in terms in terms of uh, teaching. Uh, according to some studies, uh, higher education points out that student learning outcomes can be significantly improved through the increased teaching quality, curriculum design, innovation, optimization of social env- uh, equipment, so resources. So I'm just gonna talk about the three things in terms of how people teach and approaches. So uh, I would say 90% of the faculty, and, and I Tracy showed you that old model that I got from Dr. Cragen, the old model of traditional, that we have really not changed how we teach. And so it's subject-centered focus. It's a lecture. And, and the emphasis is, is really on the subject and perhaps what some would say on the professor. And that's what we call passive learning. Students are not engaged. They're kind of just, well, they're really playing on their phones and they're talking to their friends and you don't really know it. The other one is what we say is better is problem-centered curriculum design approaches with student, uh, students to analyze problems and solutions, which is more engaging than a subject-centered approach, but still not at the optimum. Uh, when I look, what we look at is a learner-centered uh, curriculum where you start at the beginning, you start focusing on your end results, your students. You're dealing with Generation Z. How do we how do we engage them? And, we, and we're serious with that. And that is active learning. They're engaged. They're, they're, they're studying the material and, and there's dynamic. And this is what we're, this is what we're advocating and trying to give you tools and resources so you can be a more engaging professor, and your students will have be career ready. Mm-hmm. So what we're recommending in this presentation is we're recommending that you develop what we're calling a faculty engagement strategy. And so this starts with a course strategy. We want you to reflect and think about prior to ever entering the classroom and you're just thinking about your course, what does student engagement look like in my course? What do I want it to look like in my course? And then we're asking you to develop a plan to execute this end goal. We believe that you should communicate your engagement expectations with students in the beginning and be determined to execute your plan, but also be flexible because you may have to adjust parts of your strategy if you find that they are not effective. Next. So here's what we call it the wrong. We're gonna try to get you engaged and try to show you examples of what it it really means 
uh, what it really means to engage, engage our students. And so we're just gonna start. Uh, we're gonna start in the area that everyone everyone knows about, and that is the lecture. I want you I want you to put in your in the chat uh, if if uh, put in your raise your hand if you are if you do a lecture. Can anybody do we have anybody in the room saying that? So uh, that is that is. Thank you for raising your hand. Nice <laughs> nice nice committed. Appreciate that. Appreciate that, uh, Doctor Polk. So let's talk about this this whole lecture concept. So I'm gonna share with you this. I was blessed to evaluate to uh, provide feedback on one of our faculty members that that was getting that's up for this that's gonna be up for tenure in the next couple of years. I sit in the classroom. So he was a theology guy. So he was very dynamic. He was he was he had like 24 students in Rome. He was going off, he was amazing. And I, you know, I'm an engineer, so I'm taking notes. And I saw 13 out of 24 people. Engaged. They play on their phones. They're doing everything else. He's thinking he's doing amazing. And so I, I met with him. I met with him. Uh, we sat down and did, did a coaching thing. And I said, hey, here's some avenues that you can get your students engaged. And the next, I, the next observation, he went from less than 50 percent to 100 percent. And I'm going to share how, how many of you want, you want, want that. How many of you want 100 percent participation from your from your students? Can I get can I get a eight? Well, no, eight minutes. Can I get a. Can I get a thumbs up? Okay, thumbs up. Okay, here we go. So here's some here's some things about student feedback. Uh, 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 Trace is going to talk about the chat, but I'm talking about electronic polls. So you could use polls, especially if you're online, you can use electronic polls, but there are other instruments you could use. You can take a poll in the class. Do you get it? I use this. This is how I help uh, one of my colleagues. I'd say, after you present a concept, I'd say, give me a thumbs up if you understand. That way, I don't have to wait until the end of the semester, given the exam, to find out they didn't understand the material. And so you get real-time information. The other one, if you want to get more engaging, have them stand up and sit down. Because some of them are sleeping in class, you know that. And so that way it gets, gets them up. And you can ask most of the students, they tell you, in my class, they're going to get 90 100% participation. But here's some alternatives. Okay, I'll probably get in trouble for this. But I'm going to tell you this. There are some alternatives uh, to uh, to lecture. Here's one of go on a tour. Uh, we've been we've been to the Shawnee Mall. I took my students to the Shawnee Mall. Uh, uh, I mean the Shawnee uh, Mill uh, where they make flour. I took them to the Shawnee Mall, my sales class. But I also took them to the funeral uh, to the funeral home. And I told them they could try try on before they buy. That's a joke. But that is a way of engaging them. The other one is debates. The other one is get is, is guest speakers. A role playing. So what I want to show you right now is that I had one of the professors, uh, Dr. Rudabach, uh, uh, and I had uh, Ms. Laura Haggins. They came in my classroom. I was out of town uh, doing an assessment for ACBSP, and I want I did a video reel that they got to demonstrate they understand it. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play you what, what the students came up with. Uh, this, this is an example. I'm Graham Stiefel. Laura Hagen came and spoke to our class today, and these were some of the things that I got out of it. In order to be successful in the micro internship, you have to know yourself well and know your strengths and weaknesses. It's important to feel prepared before starting your internship. So talking to people who have worked with this previous client before have experience in certain areas is very much encouraged. Hi, my name is Lindsay Baird, and today my small business marketing class had the privilege of listening to Lori Hagens talk about eight competencies that will help us in our micro internships. One that stood out to me was communication. She shared how communication can be verbal, written, and nonverbal. I'm Thomas Meadow, and the key point that I wanted to share with you guys that I took away from Ms. Lori Higgins was utilizing the OBU's career portal. The OBU's career portal is a way for you to upload your resume, job experience, cover letter, all of that, so that way jobs and employers can see what you do outside of school. This is also a way for you to reach out to jobs search jobs and reach out to employers so that way you can land internships and get new job opportunities for you. Well, they kind of express themselves in, in terms of that. So those are all the ways uh, that, that, that that can work. And so as we mentioned earlier in the presentation, uh, Generation Z values connection, they value engagement. And so one tool that you can employ in your classes are icebreakers, and we all are familiar with icebreakers. Um, and so what we've provided are, you know, just some suggested icebreakers 
This does not have to be um, the list that you use. There are other types of icebreakers. Um, there's a 30, 60 second pitch circle um, where students are asked to provide a short uh, 30 second story about themselves. Uh, you can have the birthday lineup where you line them up in the classroom according to their birthday and usually that generates some conversation. Um, you can utilize electronic polls for different types of questions. Um, you can, of course, break them into teams and have them introduce their teammate. And then um, you can play this new game that uh, Dr. Green came up called Two Truths and Two Lies, as opposed to One Lie. Um, and so the, the point there is that you want everyone to guess which um, facts are indeed lies and not really facts. And so again, this is just a small sampling of some icebreakers that you can try in your hey, in your classroom. Hey, hey Tracy, I got a, I got a novel a, a, a novel idea. Uh, using chat, could you could you give them a question and see let's see if we can we can get some engagement from our participants. Ask them a question in their chat and let's let's see what they come up with. What is your favorite food? Okay, everybody, put in the in the chat box. What is your your favorite food? And let's let's see how it goes. Nothing too exotic. Okay, <laughs> cookies must be uh must be uh Dr. Holden. Cook, cookies, what kind of cookies, Dr. Holden? Pork chops. Oh my goodness, oh, I pizza, love pork chops. ice cream, <laughs> barbecue. barbecue. Oh man, gumbo. Okay, what kind of gumbo? Barbecue, amazing. So uh, just like we, you can engage your students, uh, just like we engage you. You can do the same thing for your for your students. And, and Chad, I like the ice cream. I, I was I was, I was kind of wondering what kind of ice cream, but uh, good, great, great, great job. So I moving from icebreakers, we go to uh, we go to class discussions, and I love class discussions. I'm going to be honest with you, my life has been transformed because of my students. And here's what here's so uh, one of the things that we're going we're going to give you guys or some references. Uh, I have a I have tons of books where you can do icebreakers and group discussions uh, to get your students engaged. And I think for me, the apex of my career is that I don't have to come up with ideas and suggestions of, of, of activities. My students are the ones driving that. And, and I think that I think that is really important uh, to have to have your students in, engage in that. So I'm just going to talk about some things that I really think is uh, great. Of course, the polls you can do online, but I think I think one of the things I like is board work. I'm old school. I had chalk. I got myself dirty when I was a professor in 2005 because I was at a I was at a, a, a underserved community school, and they were, you know, they they just had chalkboards. But I was get, but my students they do a board work, and uh, if we have time, I'll show you some examples of board work that that, that they've done. But board work. They're also doing case studies, like everyone does case studies in business, but it's student led. So I so on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, I do a lecture, not 30, 40 minutes, but I do a lecture of 15 minutes, and then I do coaching and mentoring. But on Wednesday, the students have to do a case study presentation and they got to do a recap. So now I'm giving a lecture, and on Wednesday, they reemphasize what I taught. And they're and they're what we're doing, I, and I'm sharing this is a is an activity for you guys. Actually, a resource It's an engagement form that I created. So in the past, this this helps you as your as your professor. So engagement, I I was I was letting somebody present, teams present, and I was going through and trying to figure out who was participating. But I got smarter. God spoke to me, and I got smarter. So I have the team that's presenting. Uh, they they're evaluating their classmates on their effectiveness. And that has been transformational because now they have skin in the game and they're calling them up and they're not blaming it. They're not getting mad at me. They're getting mad at their classmates. So uh, that, is, that, is, that is another good one. Uh, the other one is technology. Uh, technology, and I'm going to let you know, this, this, is a, this is why I think it's another uh, avenue. Again, we're dealing with digital natives. And again, I think games, Kahoot is a big deal. Student-led presentations, uh, Zoom, uh, Zoom presentations. Uh, Why well, I have more time uh, in this box is a presentation that, that you that you can observe my students doing. 
Hello, we are team five, also known as team Erie. And this is our report over rounds one and two of the practice rounds. I'm gonna hand it off to Jerron and he's gonna go over research and development. Okay, so for the research and development part, we kind of just played around with the numbers a little bit, try to stay in the range of what the customers were looking for. Uh, for each of these, I increased it just a little bit just to see where it was gonna you know, end up. For re reliability, I didn't really change much. I kind of left a couple of them the same. For edge, I changed it. Uh, I increased it by 500. And then for a lot of the other ones, I just increased the size and the performance. So I'm going to pass it off to Tyler, and he's going to go over marketing. Yeah, so for the marketing side, um... I wanted to target both the top selling products in both the promo budget and with the sales budget. Let your students present on Zoom. And what I, I actually do, all final presentations after the COVID are now online. And so I'm bringing industry experts all across the world and we're videotaping it. And I helps the next uh, class coming in, the presentations get better. So the other thing we talk about uh, is the use of Zoom. That is the future. We're going to be more remote. And on that note, Trace, I think I think we need to get them more engaged. What 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 are you what are you thinking? I think we absolutely should. And so now we're at the point in our presentation where we want you to participate and we want you to be engaged. And we want to do this and illustrate the power of student engagement through breakout rooms. So we are going to put you in breakout rooms. Uh, while you're there, please use your time to identify ways that you engage your students um, that perhaps we didn't highlight in this presentation. And so we'll give you uh, roughly three to five minutes to discuss. And we ask that your group leader, um, you identify a group leader that can report uh, when we return to the main session. So now here's the fun part. Here's the part where Daryl and I become the student and you all become the teacher. So we'll start with room three. Um, and I think Betty was in that room. I'm not sure who the group leader is for, for the room. Yeah, I'm David Houghton. I guess I can okay. speak for us really quickly. All right. Um, so uh, Betty is in health education and I'm in marketing education. And uh, she had mentioned just some uh, sort of games that she plays with her students to help them understand sort of portion size back in the day and portion size now so that it hits home to them. Mm. And then uh, picking up on that thread, I also try to use some gamification of the curriculum through simulations and, and other uh, class activities to help them uh, to engage with the curriculum in some novel ways. Okay, thanks, David. I appreciate yeah. that. Uh, so next we will hear from Chad's group. I'm not sure. Who's the leader in that room? Yeah, so um, we discussed, so we, we're using a lot of kind of what you said. Um, I like what Dr. Polk said as far as being up front with the students and calling it not a lecture, but a discussion with the students. And so giving the, the students um, up front that this is a discussion to, um, so a lot of turn to your neighbor or, uh, work in groups and go talk with each other about this case study. And so even though new content is being um, presented, the students are still have the expectation that um, they're going to be active participants in the in the classroom. Absolutely. Well, thank you. Thank you, Chad. And so uh, last but certainly not least, Clarence's team, who's the leader? We don't know. I think Trina should be the leader <laughs> <laughs> because she has some great stuff she's doing with her entrepreneurial class. Awesome. So I will share in every class, the expectation is for our students to be able to stand and deliver. So they understand the importance. Students know that I'm counting the ums. So I always teach them the importance of pausing. We do a little yoga in class for deep breathing. I believe in inspirational TED Talks. So they've seen Bevy Smith. I highly encourage all of you to listen to Bevy Smith 
talking about being her authentic self. I also um, show them the Steve Harvey video where he talks about taking the lid off. There, there are no limitations to what you can do. Our students are able to go to chamber meetings because they have to understand the importance of the ecosystem and networking. And of course, I have Dr. Green presenting. So we're doing the marketing boot camp. So it's engaging mm -hmm. as many of, I guess, all of the positive that we can. And they, they're told that failure, last but not least, failure is falling forward. Mm. Yes, it is. And so, wow, I learned a lot. I don't know about you, uh, Daryl, but um, I heard that um, our colleagues use games, they use simulations, they uh, have group discussions, they break their students into group for small group discussions, uh, that there's a belief that students should stand and deliver and they should avoid the use of arms. So I know I have uh, horribly violated that rule today. <laughs> and uh, I love the yoga idea. How cool is that? And uh, use of inspirations. And so uh, I have learned a lot, Dr. Green, um, have, from our I colleagues have. today. And we, we really appreciate your, your engagement. And we're gonna, we're gonna wrap, this, wrap this thing up because we know some of you like to teach. So it, let's uh, let's uh, wrap this thing up. So for those of you who are eager to learn more, we've prepared some recommended readings where you can um, take a look at it and decide for yourself whether or not some of the suggested readings would work in your own course. We also next uh, have provided you with a list of the reference utilized for references utilized for this presentation. And they can also serve as sources of inspiration as you develop the course strategy. And next, okay. What an amazing, what amazing time uh, with the with you guys have been great colleagues, great listeners. I'm good for your participation. I am going to email you our, all our presentations along with materials that will help you be help you be better, uh, better clients to be uh, be better faculty, better administrators, and feel free to share that. Uh, also, we have a syllabus, uh, notes, handouts. So I just want to refresh. Uh, we have we have showed that that learning can be fun and learning can be. Uh, engaging and students can and achieve results. And we talked about the Caleb learning style, uh, which can in, impact that. And we talked about the new faculty model where you transcend from just being, not saying just, but being being perhaps expanding yourself to being a coach and a, and a mentor, okay? And so I want to leave you with a, a story that kind of sums up what we, we're talking about. Uh, uh, back in Louisiana, uh, there was a winter storm in Shreveport. And there was a lady, her name was Ellen, was getting home. There was a blizzard. Uh, she was going home. On, she was on the interstate. And she could not see. It was so much snow and so much blizzard. But she could see in the distance there was a car. And she saw that car. And she kind of laid it on that car. And she, and she, and she kind of stumbled through the snow. And she noticed all of a sudden, all of a sudden, that the car stopped right in the middle of the interstate. She was shocked. She could not believe that. And what, what was more, uh, more shocking, she saw a man get off his car and walk toward her. And she said, uh, and, he, and, and he knocked on the window and she reluctantly rolled it down. And she said, what are you doing, sir? How, what are the, you're in the middle of the highway. The guy looked at her and kind of shook his head. He said, lady. I'm on my I'm I'm in my I'm I'm in my driveway and you trespass. So what so what am I what am I saying? Are you following the right person? Are you headed in the right direction? Generation Z is very different than generations previously. We need to focus on that. Uh, so so she is uh, she is Tracy Dunn. And he is Dr. Daryl Green. Uh, thank you so much for your presentations, for your involvement, and may God bless you real good.